Hello everyone, um, today I'm going to be talking about caseous lymphadenitis as it relates to goats. This disease in goats is also known in more common terms as CL or cheesy goat, and it is a highly contagious bacterial disease that can infect both sheep and goats, but for this video we will focus mainly on goats. And if a goat were to be become infected with the disease, the rest of the herd would be at risk of contracting it as well due to its contagious nature. It's caused by a bacteria named Coronibacterium pseudotuberculosis. And one thing to note about this bacteria is that it is very hardy, making it remain on farms for quite a while as it can last from 8 months all the way up to a whole year, depending on the surface it's on. First, I'd like to talk a little bit about how it spreads. Goats become infected when the bacteria enters through wounds or other lesions on the skin. One of the most common ways that it enters the system is through small cuts in the mouth called microabrasions. Um, goats can develop these microabrasions inside their mouths due to the coarse material and roughage that they browse for in pastures. That rough brush is what scrapes inside their mouth, leaving behind tiny lesions for the bacteria to invade if it were to be ingested. A healthy goat coming in contact with the pus from another infected goat can also spread the bacterium through any present superficial cuts on that goat's skin, since it has access to the bloodstream in this way. And once the bacterium has entered the bloodstream, it travels to the lymphatics. I'd also like to share a snapshot of how the bacteria affects the body and its mechanism within the body as well. The bacterium starts off by producing an exotoxin called phospholipase D that aids in damaging endothelial cells and increases vascular permeability, therefore enhancing dissemination of the bacteria. In other words, this toxin produced by the bacteria helps it spread, replicate, and invade body cells by damaging their integrity. The bacteria is able to invade phagocytes in the lymphatic system, eventually causing them to rupture, release the bacteria, and then continue that cycle. As the bacteria continue replicating and causing the death of inflammatory cells, abscesses on the lymph nodes begin to form and cause the characteristic symptoms that we see in goats. Further diving into the symptoms, the term cheesy goat comes from the appearance of the pus from a lesion caused by this bacterium. Infected animals develop abrasions that release very thick, yellow, odorless cottage cheese-like pus that we can see here in this picture on the top left. And below that is an example of the inflamed lymph node that a goat will have when having this disease. Talking a little bit more about the abscesses that we see in these goats, um, they can develop on both internal and superficial lymph nodes. In goats, the abscesses occur most commonly in the lymph nodes around the face and the head. The most common sites including the parietal, prescapular, and submandibular lymph nodes that have been outlined here in this diagram as well, and the internal form of this infection is actually more common in sheep but can also occur in goats, where the bacterium infects internal visceral and lymphoid tissue, such as that is found in the kidneys or the mammary glands, and does not cause superficial abscesses. However, when this happens, symptoms will include weight loss and lethargy and can be more challenging to diagnose since other clinical signs will be dependent on the major organ systems that are affected. If a goat is suspected to have this disease, there are uh, diagnostic testing options available to be confirmed as well. Um, if a goat is suspected, a physical examination is first performed, and if abscesses are seen or palpated, then it is highly suggestive of cheesy goat. However, uh, bacterial culture is necessary to accurately diagnose since other bacterial strains can also cause abscesses. Another test, called a synergistic hemolysin inhibition, can detect antibodies against the exotoxin produced by the bacteria, and positive results can indicate past or recent exposure and the development or confirmation of active lesions. 
When treating CL, it's important to know that it's not considered a curable disease. From a management perspective, the most practical approach that is taken is to cull the ill animals from the herd and to try to maintain the other animals away from areas that may have been infected by the bacteria. When an animal is treated, it's likely due to genetic or emotional value if they were pets, for example. There are several options for managing and treating CL that are done for aesthetic reasons and to limit the infectivity to the rest of the herd. To treat CL, one can perform lancing and draining, surgical excision, systemic antimicrobials, and interlesional antimicrobials. All of these options should be first consulted with a veterinarian and administered under their care. And just to touch a little bit on the economic impact of CL, like any disease, there is likely to be an economic implication in the event that a herd is affected, whose severity of the losses is dependent on the uses of the herd. Economic losses occur for a variety of reasons and are caused by death, trimming of infected carcasses, hide loss, loss of sales for breeding animals, and premature culling of infected animals from the herd. Though I cannot quantify the amount of loss, it's important that herd managers are aware of this disease as economic losses are imminent if contracted. It's important to prevent CL because it is there is currently no known cure for the disease. Strict biosecurity measures should be taken when purchasing new animals into the herd. And one thing to note is that there is no longer a vaccine available for goats. In the past, both sheep and goats had vaccines available to prevent CL. However, currently only sheep do. And it's important to also note that vaccines for sheep should never be used on goats for safety reasons. Thank you for watching and for more information on CL, feel free to look through these sources listed below.